I talked to quite a few uh, boot camps out there. Their recruiter was the only one who wasn't trying to sell me something. The best advice that I can give you is if you're, whatever you're doing, if you're starting to think and contemplate about um, something else, you need to listen to that inner voice because that inner voice is telling you it's time for a change. Breaking into the tech industry can feel extremely overwhelming, especially if you're trying to do it without a degree or any prior experience. Trust me, I know. But what if I told you there's a faster, more practical way to land a higher paying job in tech? Today, we're taking an inside look at Careerist, the tech bootcamp that's actually kind of making some waves with its unique approach to career success. I've talked to a lot of people in tech and talked a lot about bootcamps, but Careerist's story actually stood out to me. They don't just teach you the technical skills, it's about real world experience and results. In this episode, I'm joined by a graduate of one of their programs who's been through it all. We uncovered what made them choose Careerist, the challenges they faced, and how this bootcamp prepared them to confidently step into a tech career. So without any further ado, let's roll into this week's episode. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Do you mind uh, kind of introducing yourself and what you do? Yeah. Um, so my name's Ferris. I am a software QA engineer. Uh, I work for a company called Compact uh, Custom Data Processing, uh, and I'm a manual QA. Nice. Awesome. Before you could decide to jump into like doing a boot camp and getting started into the industry, what were you doing? You know, did you have like kind of any tech experience prior to this? So I had a little tech experience uh, that was a over 10 years old. Um, I also have an IT degree uh, from that time. I was working in, as a, a database designer and then um, I switched careers, went into sales uh, and was there for uh, almost 11 years. Um, and then uh, I sort of saw the writing on the wall. I was in real estate sales. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but mar the dramatic market shift. And I just wanted some more stability and I had this burning itch to get back into tech because I felt like I left something undone. And I was really just looking for what would be the best avenue for me to get my foot back into tech. And um, I thought a boot camp would be the best way to go. Nice. Uh, you know, cost wise and time wise. And um, that's how I got here. Now, what challenges or really doubts did you have when you decided to like, hey, it's time to get back into tech? So, you know, having to manage working full time uh, and going back to school, the costs were a big uh, deciding factor. And um, wanting something, you know, I guess a little bit more stable, uh, less cyclical. Uh, and I needed to sort of weigh all the options on the table. You know, there was the option of going back to more traditional education or um, going through a boot camp because <clears throat> I do have that degree that I can rely on. And it's not like um, I'm, it, it, you know, tech illiterate. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, I, and I was just about to ask, you know, why did you decide to go the boot camp route? Like, why did that feel like the best path versus going some of the more traditional routes? Really the time frame and the cost investment. Um, I was just looking at something. I wanted to get into tech faster than, you know, a, a year or two of more traditional education. Um, and the cost was a little bit prohibitive. It would have been, you know, taken out a loan versus um, using my own funds. And um, careers really provided a really great opportunity for both of those to sort of come together. Uh, I also found coming from sales that talking with their recruiter, they were the, I talked to a, quite a few uh, booth camps out there. Their recruiter was the only one who wasn't trying to sell me something. Uh, and oh, really? that, that was important. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, absolutely. Cause I kind of feel like some of the boot camps are like, they really try to get you to sign on the dotted line and rush you in and, you know, um, you know, over promise the world, you oh, know, did they. you have that experience? Uh, no, I found out. So of course there was, um, you know, talking about, you know, you land a job and X, Y, and Z and we'll fully support you. I, all these boot camps do that to some degree, but, um, the, Promises that career made, careers made as far as what I should expect. Actually, um, what happened exceeded what they what they were telling me. You know, um, so it all came true. 
in my opinion. I think they have a really fantastic, um, not just the core curriculum, but they, their system that they will sort of, I don't want to use the word indoctrinate, but sort of steer you towards really yeah. will help land that first uh, job. And you're super prepared. At least I was from what uh, the materials that they gave. And, and, you know, I guess that kind of transitions, you know, to like, why did you choose careerist at the end of the day? You know, compared there, there's so many other options out there. Why did you pick careerist among all those others? So, again, it, it came down to they weren't trying to to, to push me you know, to sell me on something. And they weren't making these guarantees. They were saying, you know, if you follow our system, we think the job market is looking like f- uh, two to four months at the time when I was in the, in the um, going to, to sign up for the camp. And then they were willing to answer all the questions I had about the program, about the instructors, um, you know, what to expect as far as like uh, how many hours I'd need to put in on my end, um, the class structure. Like they really were very just freely informative about what, you know, this is how we operate. Um, I also asked them about their um, career coaching that they provide afterwards and uh, their internship. Um, and they'd all, you know, just seem to fit me personally, what I was looking for. Nice. You know, what, what was the biggest benefit you found in enrolling in a boot camp? you know, versus going the other routes? flexibility to still maintain, you know, full-time employment and, and get a quality education and be able to, um, you know, be, they have a class structure, but it's all recorded. So, you know, if you, for some reason, in life happens, you can't make attend a class. It's not like you just miss out on all that knowledge. I could just watch the, the Zoom recording. Um, they provide a ton of uh, great resources along the way as well. Um, and they're extremely supportive. I've been out of their program officially from the manual boot camp. September, September 23 is when I graduated. Um, I'm still getting support from them. Like I've, when I reach oh, wow. out, they, they're totally willing to help. Um, they're very encouraging. And uh, it's a great, great, uh, great organization to partner with. Now, do you mind kind of diving deeper into that? Like, what's the different stages of the program? You know, what can people expect, like from learning, internships, career coaching? You know, like how does how does that look from the beginning to where you are now since you're still receiving support from them? So um, the curriculum for the uh, software QA engineer, the the non-automation course is 16 weeks, I believe, if I remember right, followed up by um, a short internship with an actual company um, that is, you know, really essential because then you're hitting the job market with actual tangible skills that you can speak to in interviews and use moving forward. And then um, that internship is about three to four weeks long. Uh, You can, of course, request more time if you feel like you need to sort of season those uh, skills more. And then the career coaching begins. Uh, There's about, I'd say, the first month of career coaching, three weeks to a month, depending on um, how good you perform through that, are all mock interviews. And they're really trying to prep you for not just the um, sort of feel of a video interview, what to expect from the interview process. And at the same time, they're helping you fine tune a resume and a LinkedIn profile. And once they feel that you, you know, You've, you've met the bar, so to speak, like you're ready to be unleashed to the world. Um, they'll uh, encourage you to start, um, you know, applying for jobs. That whole career coaching process is a year of, oh, wow. um, you know, s- constant support. Um, that that they're, it, I've heard stories where they extend it further if need be. Um, they, they, the goal is they really want to help you land that first job. Oh, that, that's really great. And You know, speaking of, I'm curious, like with all that help, how many interviews did you have to do before landing your first, um, your your current job offer? So I had a total of 12 interviews. um, Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I actually was deciding over three different contracts. Oh, wow. Now, were those 12, like with 12 different companies or like multiple interviews at the same company? Multiple interviews with a couple of different companies and then two or three with like one or two companies. Nice. All, all the work you did with the, like the career coach and stuff, like how confident were you going into the interviews? Cause I know, I know some people when they go into the interviews, they just like feel awkward. They like kind of choke on their questions and stuff. Like, were you prepared? I was definitely prepared. Um, but I don't want to make it sound like the career coach <laughs> gives you everything. You have to do the work, right? Right. Um, yeah. 
And I, coming from sales, I, I have really good soft skills. So I'm, the face-to-face -face interaction is a little less nerve-wracking um, for me, I think, than some other people maybe find it. Uh, it it's all about to practice. Uh, there is, I'm of the opinion that even the bad interview is a great experience, right? You, you have to learn yeah. from that um, and grow through that and just get comfortable with that sort of question and answer. I think the, the biggest thing that they helped – me with was understanding that, in, especially in a tech interview, like if you don't know something, it's okay to admit that and, and point out that like, I, I may not know this or I, maybe I'm forgetting this, this, you know, acronym or so and so, but I do know how to use Google and I can do yeah. the research on my own and um, I'm self-sufficient, you know, stressing those things. No, it, it is very important. I, I tell people all the time, like you're not, most of the time not expected to know it all. And they, some, in some interviews, they'll intentionally ask you questions. Yeah. They don't expect you to know, but they want to hear your thought process to it. Exactly. They want to see like how you're going to work through it. And it's perfectly say, okay to say, you know, what? I don't know that, but this is how I'd figure that out. You know, provide a now, solution, you know? Yeah, exactly. Don't just be like, I don't know. And just sit there being quiet. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like the worst thing to do. Now, I'm, I'm curious, like once you started your job, how like did you feel like you were set up for success? Like, did you have like the tools you needed or was there a big learning curve for you? I absolutely felt confident that I was ready for the job from day one. Um, nice. So much so that my, my hiring manager at, uh, on my first day of training said, are you sure you're going to be happy with an entry level job? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, totally. You know, you got to start off somewhere. Um, so yeah, I think the skills that they gave, that they, they teach you and the, also the way that they, they, they teach it um, is very uh, easily adaptable to pretty much anyone. Uh, and I'm also very convinced after taking their course and working that um, QA, as far as a field, is one of the most open fields to pretty much anyone from any background. Because it, it it's essential that you bring yourself to the table in this and your own unique thought process. So um, not only did careerists, you know, really sort of hammer that home and just, you know, bring your own creativity. Here's the methodology. Here's the theory. Here's some tech that, to teach you how to interface with, with what you're going to be using every day. And then just like, go do it, you know? No, absolutely. And maybe for those who aren't very familiar with QA or what to expect, can you kind of break down what a, your day to day looks like, you know, in a, as a QA in a position like that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the first thing that I do every day is we have a stand up and we sort of go over, you know, the previous day's events and what we're going to be tackling this uh, coming day. And then you just sort of dive into whatever your task is. Um, you know, some days you're uh, test planning and, and uh, breaking down design docs, sort of getting prepared for uh, moving forward into writing um, test cases. Uh, other days you're just writing a ton of test cases, which um, are pretty simple and easy to do, uh, just standard English. Um, you know, nothing too crazy technical as far as that aspect goes. And then, um, you know, finding bugs, which is by far my favorite part of uh, the whole process, because uh, they literally are paying you to break their software, which is <laughs> the coolest <laughs> thing ever. There's That's literally awesome. not a week that goes by where I don't just sit up for a moment and chuckle like I'm getting paid to break this software. <laughs> you know? That's, That's so cool. <laughs> so um, my day is a little bit uh, maybe a little bit more different at this point than than some uh, QAs. We I, I do SQL testing as well. Um, so th sometimes you do have to interface with uh, the database. I think some people might get a little intimidated by that, but it's really easy once you understand the syntax. Uh, and again, they're they're not expecting any sort of technical programming interface that you're going to have to do from a QA's perspective. At least from a manual QA's perspective, they're not expecting you to be like this whiz kid coder, you know. Right. Um, it's pretty simple stuff, like simple SQL queries and like stuff like that. No, I, absolutely. And, you know, I get asked all the time this question, and I'm curious, like in your role, how important is like math and coding skills? And what are some other skills that you currently re you know, rely on for your position? 
math and coding um, is pretty basic. Anything that they're going to be asking, um, at least uh, uh, entry level, or um, I would think even one or two years of, of experience for coding, really is going to be really simple stuff. Like again, I said, uh, with the interacting with the database, they're just, you know, I need to be able to write a simple SQL query. And if you don't know that, you can Google it. It's really simple um, as far as the language and interfacing. Um, math skill is pretty basic math. Like you need to know that, you know, four plus four equals eight. If you see that uh, on a screen and that that's what it's supposed to do. Um, and then being able to follow sort of a logical process Pretty simple stuff. Uh, they're not asking you to write algorithms or break down the code. Um, although on the team I'm on, the developers sometimes when we have a bug and they don't can't figure it out, they'll show us the code, which is really cool. I get to actually look at the code. Nice. Um, but no, nothing uh, sort of you know extravagant. Cool. Um, and do you? I don't, ho hope you don't mind me asking what what's the salary in like your current role? So my total comp is ninety four. Um, okay. And that, that was my entry level, uh, so nice. it's not bad. And I get to work home from remote, so I, that was that. my next question. Do you get yeah. to work, you know, remote? Do you have to go into an office ever? Or? No. Um, the first time I will be going into any sort of office will be in April, and that's for like a team meeting, sort of a morale mm -hmm. and bonding experience. But other than that, um, you know, I get to work from my kitchen or my uh, office, which is right adjacent to my kitchen. And uh, nice. sometimes in pajamas, if I want, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Now, I, I've I've read this on a couple of different articles, like on Forbes and Career Bliss, that QA is one of the happiest jobs out there. Do you do you, do you agree, or what, what's your take on that? One thousand percent. Like, nice. I, I've sometimes I have to catch myself because coming from high stress sales, I'm just like I can't believe how like I, at five o'clock I'm done. You know. Um, there is the only stress that I've encountered, and it, it's really not a stress. It's just a lot of work. Is the regression testing phase, because you know this just repeated tests all day, yeah. all day, all day. Outside of that, um, yeah, there's really <laughs> there's virtually no stress to to the to the QA world. Nice. I, I was gonna ask you, like, how has this changed your life since you started your new job? Like, has it impacted you personally or professionally? It has impacted me personally. I'm, I'm a lot happier person. Uh, I get to actually have like a social life. Um, oh, that's cool. Get to enjoy my time, you know? So I can't complain about it. I think yeah. everyone should go be a QA personally. <laughs> nice. Is there any additional advice you give people who are uncertain about making this career change or even like joining a boot camp? Yeah. The best advice that I can give you is if you're, whatever you're doing, if you're starting to think and contemplate about um, something else, you need to listen to that inner voice because that inner voice is telling you it's time for a change. And um, whatever path you go forward, if you choose a boot camp or the more traditional route, just believe in yourself and um, definitely don't look back, you know go forward and, and, and pursue happiness and, and your dream job. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I really appreciate you coming on the channel and given all this wonderful advice, if people have actual questions for you, is there somewhere they can reach out to you and ask questions? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I think I shared my LinkedIn link. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. That's, that's the best place to reach me. Um, cause I have it on pretty much every day. <laughs> um, and it, it's an easy form. Oh, absolutely. And we'll make sure and link that down in the description below. Again, thank you for taking you know so much time to come on the channel and share all this knowledge with us. I, I really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. It's amazing how programs like Careers can make such a huge impact on someone's career. Hearing stories like this really goes to show you what's possible when you have the right guidance and resources. And if you're ready to explore a tech career for yourself, Chris is offering an exclusive $300 discount through the link down in the description below. It's a great way to jumpstart your journey with some extra savings. There's so much more we can unpack about building a successful career, and I've got plenty of tips and strategies in some of the other episodes I've done. So if you're not already, make sure and subscribe. And if you got some value from this episode, hit that like button. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. And until next time, keep learning.